Hey guys, Nikki here and I am back with yet another hygiene video. Now let's just go ahead and tell the truth. We are all on lockdown right now, quarantining. And you guys know you might be doing a little bit something else too much. <laughs> so we're just going to discuss how to keep it right. Um, but we're going to do it in a question and answers format. So I asked you guys on Instagram and Snapchat before all of this stuff happened to send me questions that you need answers to questions that wasn't in one of the one two three four five videos i've already done um if it's a repetitive question or a question that i did answer in one of those videos they will all be linked in a playlist that will scroll right here but there are still quite a few questions and so if you are one of those type of people that clicked and you're like why the hell do you keep doing these videos enough is enough you're here you're listening to me right now, right? You're watching me right now, right? So that's why I keep doing them, okay? So um, before I get started, you guys know that I am always sponsored in these videos by Nutriblast. And so, yeah, I will be mentioning them over and over and over in this video because from the first vaginal hygiene video I did, that was like the biggest treat I found from that video. I knew nothing about the um, Boric Life All Natural Suppositories um, and the applicators, but you guys kept mentioning Boric Acid under that video. So yeah, that's what made me try these. And so you guys know I swear by them. I will have a discount code below, below, below for you guys, okay? Um, and yeah, Trust me, a lot of people will probably need them because um, I know y'all been getting it in. <laughs> so if you want to get into the question and answer part of this video, please continue to watch. Yeah. Heads up. I will have my phone in my hand because I do take notes because I just, you know, get a little bit chatty and all over the place and I get so eager to bring you guys information that it's like blah, blah, blah. it's good information I just don't deliver it right sometimes and I probably still won't right now but we're gonna go for it so I try to keep it at a limit of questions and if it's one of those questions that's kind of technical for me I will be reading um, to give you guys the medical term and etc because I'm not a doctor or anything this is not medical advice this is all from personal experience Okay, I'm not forcing any of this on you guys. This is what I do and what I know. So, of course, this is not professional advice, right? All right, so let's get into the first question. The first question say, what is the vagina supposed to smell like? So, I took notes on this. So, listen, listen really, really good. I always say that every vagina has a natural odor. Nope, a natural scent. I don't want to get that confused. It's going to have a scent, but that scent is not supposed to be an odor. So basically the vagina is home to a bacteria called flora and flora is what controls your pH balance. Your pH balance is supposed to be between a 3.5 and a 4.5 to be natural. If it get above that, that's when the odor starts to occur like your fishy odor and all of that. So what you're trying to do is just keep your pH balance balanced. It is really normal for your vagina to have a slight scent like i just said that is totally normal and what you eat sometimes can influence what it smells like like garlic seafood and all that um but if the scent continue for a long period of time that's when we got a problem girl that's when we need to be going to the doctor well probably not i don't know about now you just need to get some bored light because i wouldn't dare go to the doctor right now um no i don't want to be at the hospital but you guys get what i'm saying so there are two main odors i stress this all the time bacteria and yeast yeast you'll have a cottage cheese discharge and bacteria smells like fish now with both of them you can use the boric life suppository i've already told you guys where you can get them the link to them will be in the description box okay so let's move into the next this question. question says my vagina has a strong smell and gets itchy around my period what the f is going on oh well i'm grown <laughs> <laughs> so let me break it down to you what's going on okay let me break it down really quick quick really 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 quick so basically the vagina has a healthy mix of the yeast and bacteria when it's not healthy the same 
same offset that your menstruation or your period can cause that can trigger an imbalance in the bacteria and the yeast and cause an odor. So basically your period is a trigger and also if there is an abnormal mixture of the bacteria and the yeast that's a trigger also for odor. If you are itchy and have an odor during your period, again, it's just the imbalance of your pH balance. The pH of the blood is above 7, and remember I said it needs to be stay within the 3.5 to the 4.5 range, so maybe, just maybe, that's where that odor is coming from because your pH balance is too high. It's, it's too acidic so yeah they can typically cause a fishy odor but that will clear up after your cycle and then I always suggest after your cycle that you use the um, boric life also because it just helps flush you out honey it takes you back to where you need to be back like you never left where you can just bust it open and have a grand old time okay but that's really normal for your pH balance to be offset during your cycle and that's why you can have a fishy odor all right Y'all with me? Let's move on to the next question. So the next question says, what are the symptoms of a yeast infection and how do you get it? So I did a whole entire video on the different discharges, but the symptoms are basically, sometimes you can get an odor, sometimes you don't. It's a white cottage cheese-like discharge. It itches, sometimes it burns, it's very irritable. So basically what happens down there is the yeast is disrupted and it causes an overgrowth of yeast. And so that could be caused by a lot of things, the type of panties you wear, the type of soap you use, if it's getting air, a partner, the type of jeans you wear. It can be caused by what you're eating, if you're taking medicine like antibiotics, amoxicillin or something like that. So there are a lot, a lot of ways that you can cause an overgrowth of yeast. So then we'll roll into the next question, what is bacterial vaginosis? Um, like I said, it's, it's very easy to mistake one for the other yeast and bacterial vaginosis. The only difference is bacterial vaginosis is like a grayish discharge and it has a really bad fishy odor, okay, especially when it's really bad. And basically it's the good bacteria, is now bad bacteria bacteria in the vagina and it's sort of kind of like a yeast it can be caused by um, sex what you wear um, not properly cleaning um, a whole bunch of things guys um, just any bad bacteria in the vagina um, with both yeast and bacteria I feel like the natural way is the boric life a lot of you guys will try a whole bunch of other different stuff but this um, boric life works pretty good um, and of course, there are a lot of over-the-counters and things that can be prescribed, like Monistat, um, Metronidazole, Flagyl, all of that kind of stuff that your doctor has to prescribe. But really, girl, you don't have to go through all that. I'm, I keep telling y'all, you just need to get you some of these and keep them in your cabin. You ain't got to bother nobody. All right. <laughs> Since I keep plugging these, I'm going to do a really, 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 really quick rundown really, really quick. There are strips that you can buy from this company. I will link all of this below. I don't even have them in here with me. You can test your own pH balance. I will highly recommend you to not use these if you are pregnant um, or you consult your doctor first. That's with any medication. Someone asked me that in my last video. Why I got to ask my doctor if it's natural? When you're pregnant, you got to ask your doctor if you can even take Tylenol. It's a lot of stuff you can't take when you're pregnant. So, yeah, so here are the suppositories right here. Here are the pills. No, 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 no. Applicators right here. The suppositories right here. Basically, you just put one of them on one of these stems right here and insert it up you, preferably before bed. And then when you wake up, you make sure you put a panty liner or something like that because it's going to gush out, y'all. It's going to run back down. So, yeah, um... You take the test, you can test your own pH balance at home, and you can treat your own offset at home. It's that simple. You just got to have the whole the whole combo pack. You got to have like a like McDonald's, you got to go through the drive through I need the uh, number one, the whole combo, all right? Link below. Yeah, so I have some more notes I want to read because you guys always ask me these questions about these pills. So I want to go over them really, really quick. Um, basically, yeah, you don't you don't need a prescription for these, and they're way cheaper than going to the doctor. That's why I really, really like them. Um, you don't have to go through the embarrassment. You don't have to pay all that money to go to your doctor and all that. Boom, you already have them, and you can just order them online. I also like that I keep mentioning bacteria vaginosis and yeast but it helps with dryness and all of that also so if you have that problem down there these are good for that um you do not take these by mouth you do not 
take these by mouth okay <laughs> no they are only to be inserted up you and you can insert these up you when you are on your cycle I like how you can use these at the first sign of an infection or if you have reoccurring bacterial infections or yeast infections, it's for every step. If you do it seven days and it don't work, you can keep doing it, especially if you're one of those people that get reoccurring bacteria infections and stuff. So it's just great all the way around for you guys. So this product was created in a lab with gynecologists, so that's why I recommend it over a lot of other brands and stuff that I do see. And if you go on Amazon and read the reviews, you will be floored. They don't hardly have any negative reviews. So I'm not just saying this. This is really a good product. It's actually the number one bestseller on Amazon in the U.S. and Canada. So that should tell you a whole, whole, whole lot. Okay, a whole lot. And my favorite part is they offer a it works policy. If it don't work, guess what you can do? send it back now that's how you know something good when they like if it don't work just send it back because they know it's gonna work so you're not gonna be sending it back all right <laughs> so basically i wanted to get my little spill about them out the way because it's gonna be the answer to a lot of these questions even if you don't prefer the wax is this terrible no whatever floats your boat i can't stand a, a bush downer it's, it's just not clean to me it's easier for me to clean down there without a bush um but a lot of you guys said that that's what fights off the bacteria and stuff no wrong no answer is wrong you guys go blow for blow and fight in the comments and hey if that's what worked for that person that's what worked for them we're all different our bodies are all made up of different things we all use different soaps we all use different deodorants and we all can use different products down there so don't bash somebody's method um if it works for you it works for you if you want to shave it shave it if you want to grow that hair out grow that hair out boo it's nothing wrong with it at all I have had bacterial vaginosis before, but they say after you have sex, you're supposed to get up and pee, but all the time I have the symptoms of bacterial vaginosis and I wonder why. Here's the thing, I have to explain this because I said it a little off in a video before, you're supposed to pee after sex, that is two different holes. But from all the commotion and friction, it helps with UTIs and etc. if you get up and pee after sex. Sorry the camera. But you can still begin these bacteria infections after sex because um, the urinating after sex cleans out that hole from UTIs and stuff, not your actual vaginal canal. So you still need to like try the boric acid or something because some people are just prone to them or it might be your partner. So best way to keep pH balanced when you have unprotected sex often one partner. Insert one of these every time after you have sex. Insert one of these suppositories, just one. Just insert it every time because sometimes some people just offset you down there. There's no way around it. You can take a shower, you can urinate, it's gonna happen. So, yeah. Insert um, a boric life, and or what you can do is have your doctor prescribe you like the uh, flagell gel and insert one thing of that after it but this is way cheaper so i wouldn't even bother my doctor is it okay to taste your own vagina before <laughs> that threw me off okay sorry before letting someone else do it just to make sure it's okay yeah it's yours <laughs> i mean i often even tell people if somebody tell you they i want you to lick my backside go get your wipe or go get your white cloth wipe it if that towel or that baby wipe is clear you're good okay so you kind of gotta like test the waters it's kind of like food you taste it before you eat it don't you let me throw a little bit more seasoning salt up in there let me throw a little bit more garlic up in there <laughs> then you eat your food same with you if you want to make sure you right you gotta test the waters <laughs> Okay, anyway, I've heard it's better to wash your vagina with your hands instead of a washcloth. Is this true? Personal preference. I feel like it helps me a whole lot when I use my hands, soap up my hand, and blah, 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 blah. I can really feel the cracks, the cre crevices, the everything, <laughs> and then I go back in with a towel, but that's a personal preference. So, yeah, I mean, I do both. So, try both, boo. 
Whoa, this question alone. Hello, okay. This say this might be a little off subject, but I have always had an uh, issue going behind another person. I need to use the restroom. One evening, I was standing in a long line at a restaurant waiting to use it. When I finally got a chance, I squeezed some sanitizer over the seat and wiped it down. The lady who came out was offended. Should I have waited and pissed on myself? Hell no. Shit, sanitize spray. My butt being there with a little can of Lysol. Because some people, they sit down there and stink. So, I hate going into a stall and I can still smell the person before me. I told y'all that in another video. I take a little um, scent bird in there and spray it and everything. I'm sorry if you're offended. If you're offended, uh, you need to take better care of yourself. You need to go home and figure out what's wrong with you to where I had to spray and sanitize. See, I got mad. <laughs> it's sanitizing all that before I could go in there and use the stall. Don't get mad at yourself, boo, for being clean. That's that person's fault. You get what I'm saying? Do what you gotta do to make it comfortable so you can use the restroom. Next, you were saying in one of your videos you use Irish Spring soap for the backside when you take a shower. Going forward, should we steer clear of using deodorant soaps on our vagina? Always. Is it because they're too strong and too sensitive for the air? Everybody's vagina is different. Mine is not sensitive. It's not, I mean, and some of you guys can barely put water down there or something going on. That's a case by case basis. I use the Irish Spring for the back and that's it in my Yoni bars. And that's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. But you use whatever you need. Like, I can't... I I can't tell you what to use, y'all, because I don't know what irritates you. So it's like, okay, I can only tell you what I use, and you can try it and see if it works for you, but I can't tell you what to use. Does that make sense? Okay, I was watching your hygiene videos. By the way, I love them. Thank you. And I'm extremely proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, one of the videos you were speaking about wipes. I'm a little ashamed because I do not know how to use them. Do I wipe the inside of my vagina first or just the... The outside of the inside is for both. If you feel like the outside is getting a little whatever, take the wipe, wipe it down. Just make sure you wipe front to back if you're wiping the inside, okay? Um, yeah, I prefer wipes because they just get me cleaner. I don't know. And I don't know if it's because I got nails and I just feel like with a baby wipe, I can just... I, I don't know, guys. Maybe it's a mind thing. But you can use the wipes for the inside and the outside, okay? Um... Just whatever you need to freshen up with. So, yeah, that's all of the questions. Um, a lot of the questions was about bacteria and yeast, and that's why I spent so much time on that at the beginning and kept telling y'all about this because, like, really, if you get these in your cabinet and you have them for, uh, even if you're not using them right now, you'll have them for when you need them. You get what I'm saying? And me, my friends, and everybody have already told you how great they are. So there will be a 20% link below. So, y'all. I don't think I'm going to touch on vagina for a long time. I just had to touch up because y'all still had a lot of questions, obviously. And, um, yeah. Y'all should be clean, squeaky clean by now. Shoot, this this about my fifth video talking about this. <laughs> y'all ain't clean by yet? <laughs> but I know. A lot of the times when I say I use this, I use this, you guys just want to know how I use it. Um, so I hope that breaks it down. We'll revisit this about a year from now. If guys say the same. Because, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to keep talking about this. Y'all should be squeaky clean by now. Platinum approved. Alright. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had fun making it for you guys. I took you a little fast. But, you know, sometimes you just got to get straight to the nitty gritty. I wish you guys a lot of great smelling kitties. And I'll see y'all in my next video.